Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more KSP2 and a little bit of KSP1 as well because it's kind of a comparison video. Um, you can see me here flying my uh, my brand new KSP2 version of my Cyclone under some bridges on the um, the pinnacle of uh, architectural sophistication, which is the uh, the KSC car park. Yeah, I didn't really see those during the live stream, so just gonna just gonna tick them off the list now. Anyway, if, like me, you enjoyed making aircraft in KSP-1 and you've given it a go in KSP-2, it, uh, it can't have escaped your notice that things have changed performance-wise. In fact, quite a lot. And I'm not sure if it's, like, changes to the broader aerodynamics model or if it's just the way, sort of, the aircraft parts work. Um, but today we're going to take a look at that and see if we can probe it a bit more deeply. Now. So I suppose the best way to start would be in a straight-up comparison. This is the original KSP version of my Cyclone, uh, with all the BD Armoury parts stripped. I've also adjusted it in a few other ways, just to give me the best chance of making as close an equivalent as I can in KSP2. Um, as you can see, pretty manoeuvrable, decent performance. Uh, on to the KSP2 version. Now, um, at close to supersonic speeds, it, um, yeah, it performs decently. Anything significantly below that, it becomes a lot, lot more sluggish. Um, although there are some serious difficulties in creating a KSP-2 equivalent of a, a KSP-1 craft. Uh, we're back here in the... Uh, I've got to start calling it the Vehicle Assembly Building, not the Vertical Assembly Building. And this is the uh, the Cyclone we just saw. And yeah, it's kind of difficult. If we bring up the... Uh, well, the rest of the stuff is, is, is kind of fine. I mean, the cockpit's a bit longer, but that's not a huge 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 issue but if we bring up the procedural wings menu i don't know the units any of these numbers are in it doesn't seem to relate to um to real world measurements uh, assuming you know we've still got these parts 1.25 meters um gonna phrase that slightly better never mind um and having tweaked these wings quite a bit some of these numbers seem to be in different units than some of these other numbers. So it really is a pain in the backside. I had to sort of guess what these mean and do a lot by eye and <laughs> doing the measuring thing with your fingers, holding my hands up to the screen, that kind of thing. Far from ideal, but I think I've got a decent equivalent here. I even did it, um, even tried to get some, uh, get it as close as possible with the, uh, the thicknesses of the control surfaces on the back of the wings here. That, that, May have been the wrong thing to do. The obvious thing to do then is to just increase the uh, increase the size of the control surfaces. So I increase the proportion of the wing area given over to control surfaces. It's kind of ridiculously high by default. Uh, it was much lower in my initial remake. This uh, remake, not quite up to the default setting, but a lot more. And the first thing that happens every time I launch it straight from the uh, the VAB is that you get some hideous, hideous um, self-induced roll upon takeoff. It did give me a chance to see uh, a little bit of a change in the aerodynamic model, uh, slash parts model, I'm not sure what it is, but aileron yaw seems to be a lot more pronounced in the, in this version of KSP. For whatever reason, as reliably as taking off the first time gives me this roll problem, reverting to launch solves it. And yeah, this is this is much more manoeuvrable than the uh, than the original version, but um, still not up to scratch with the uh, with the KSP one equivalent. And also, at high speed, you do tend to get a little bit of that control surface wobble going on. Just for completeness, I did do a version where the uh, the control surfaces were set to the default proportion of the wings. And to be fair, this time, it actually wasn't that far off performance-wise from the uh, the KSP-1 version of the Cyclone. The problem is that the, uh, the control surface wobble wasn't just at ridiculously high speeds. Now it was pretty much ever-present and... The only way to get rid of that is to reduce the uh, the control authority on the control surfaces, which kind of defeats the purpose of making them bigger in the first place. A couple of last little things. Uh, one of the things I have been trying to test is sort of passive stability from dihedral or high wings. This is uh, the uh, the Sparrow I built in uh, the live stream I did, and I've adjusted it to put well, yeah, slight dihedral and uh, make the wings higher. And it's yeah, sort of. The problem is every craft I build in KSP2, even after the uh, even after the revert fix, always has a slight tendency to roll one way or the other. This one keeps trying to roll right. I have tried putting it in quite a steep bank, and it will over time sort of correct itself. Um, this is all with stability assist off. Generally speaking, I found that KSP2 is a lot more forgiving when flying aircraft with uh, with stability assist off. Just generally, so that's that's definitely a positive. Although. <sighs> 
yeah, little little bugs, little bugs to fix here and there. Also, something I've noticed: if you bring up uh, the info on one of the wings in flight, you do get this lift to drag ratio. I've done a bit of testing. This seems to be completely unconnected to the wings aspect ratio, which is not right. But <laughs> maybe that's a bit too much to ask for. I don't know. Leaving the aircraft to one side for a second, uh, just as one final test to see if I could detect any major changes in the atmospheric slash aerodynamic model. Uh, I took two capsules up into orbit, one uh, in KSP-1, one in KSP-2, and then brought them back down, making sure I kept absolutely everything as identical as I possibly could. And the, uh, the KSP-2 capsule took... 30 seconds longer to splash down, which I worked out was about five and a half percent longer. So, yeah, maybe a little something there, but certainly nothing revolutionary. So what's the verdict? I think possibly one small step towards realism, one giant leap towards nerfing the hell out of all of my fighter jets. Uh, I'd be delighted if you could share your experiences in the comments, but it looks like, yeah, a few minor changes. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot more difficult to create the kind of ridiculously overpowered fighter jets we've seen in KSP-1, although by all means take that as a challenge. Um, but yes, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. If you have and you haven't already, then please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, getting involved with the Discord, great KSP and BDR community on there, and more besides. All those links in the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. You too can get your own little patron kerbal for use in the KSP-1 videos and... Once I figure out how the hell to do custom Kerbals in this one, uh, do KSP2 as well. Yes, uh, as well as your name at the end of the videos, access to the Patreon and your Discord, yada yada yada. Uh, I will be back soon with some more KSP of some version or another, but uh, until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.